Welcome back to the German leg of the PokerStars.net European Poker Tour, the penultimate leg of Season 9 of the EPT. It's final table time in Berlin, the final table of the main event. We're down to six players, and right now it's Daniel Guy Pidun who has the chip lead. A stack of 9.11 million. Sounds like a lot, but convert it into big blinds? It ain't a lot. 46 bigs. A very shallow final table. And we've got one guy, Roman Herald, with just a four big blind stack. Three super short players. It's James Hodgkin and Joe Stapleton joined by Eugene Kachalov from Team Poker Stars Pro. He's been with the Russians, now he's with us. Hey guys, good to be back here. We've got like 130 big blinds total in play, um, which isn't a lot to spread out between six people. Were you guys over there in the Russian commentary just as shocked that we're still six-handed? Um, I mean, a, a little bit, yeah. It's just we were all we, we did discuss the fact that it's like kind of uh, you know it's the it's the main event final table and everyone's so shallow. It's it's kind of unusual. I do see we have green chips in play now. Yes, the green and blacks, the 100k chips are out. So a reminder of denominations. If you're not sure, the new chips in play are the green and blacks. So you can see that uh, Daniel Guy Padun has got a nice. Array of those. Yeah, he does. It's like a wall. It's Eugene. like a def defensive wall. Almost. Eugene, what's it like to touch one of those? Uh, this was nice. I remember I had a nice <laughs> little wall of those in Barcelona, which was nice. The yellows are 25,000. The blues are 5,000. Robert Haig shoving small to big, putting Alexander Helbig to the test. Helbig folds. Haig second on the leaderboard at the moment with a stack of 8 million. Yeah, it seems like this is just going towards a... Heads up confrontation, right, between Pidun and Pidun and Haig. And I appreciate it's probably not that interesting for the average viewer to watch, but I don't actually think, considering the stack sizes, there's anything wrong with the players who've got, say, between 10 and 20 bigs, literally just waiting for good shoving spots. I mean, they can't play post-flop, so we can say, oh, you know, it's, it's taking big hands like nines or ace-king to get it in. Why not? Why are you going to start sort of messing around? Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's uh, to some degree, but I, but I definitely think that, <clears throat> like, if I mean, if I was in their position and I had twenty big blinds, I would, be, I, I would be shoving much wider versus the big stacks because sure. I, I know that they're trying to steal more. O although that could also create a dynamic where they might be careful because they know that I'm, I'm, I won't be giving them that much credit when they're opening. So it just depends on that dynamic, I guess. Yeah, and, and the dynamics, they, they kind of evolve. You know, they kind of uh, become what they are slowly a little bit over time. Because people are playing the way they are, then that's what sort of created this right here. Yeah, there's absolutely. No one, there's no one like you at this table right now who is challenging the big stacks, who is shoving a little bit lighter. And so, you know, the, the playing tight begets more playing tight. Everyone else is forced to tighten up too. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The big stacks here are pre playing perfectly. They're, they're applying a lot of, you know, they're playing very aggressively, apply, applying a lot of pressure. And that, last so. and that last hand was raise and take it for one of the big stacks, Robert Haig. Uh, Richie's just tweeted to say, OMG, you guys just cut off Joe Hashem. Shame on you. <laughs> and also, it was a cliffhanger. Did that guy get away from his Jack-4? I need to know. Maybe we'll find out at the next tournament break. Uh, if you want to get in touch, you can do so on Twitter. Tag your tweet, TPT Live. Email nuts at pokestars.tv. Eugene, happy to answer questions. Well, he will answer them. I don't know if he's happy to answer <laughs> Depends on what they are, I guess. <laughs> so when you were watching the previous level with the Russian commentators, Eugene, did you feel that uh, Daniel Gaipudun was playing the big stack well? Did you like the fact that he was putting pressure on? Uh, yeah, I, I do think he was playing pretty well. I mean, it, it seems to me like uh, Haig was not you know, getting too much in his way. It looks like he's just letting him kind of run the table and play small pots against them. You know, anytime that they would get into a hand together, it, it seemed like Haig would never bluff him. He would just kind of just try to get it to show down. And, you know, uh, you know from what I understand, uh, I think Roman was, at, uh, was commentating with us. He, he finished eighth in this tournament. So, yeah. so he said that uh, Peden is not the type of guy you want to bluff. Um, so based on that, I like Haig's approach again I, on that. But if Pedudin is smart enough and to realize that Haig is taking a very passive approach to him, then he's correct to defend a lot of hands like 10-4 suited like he was yep. defending before. He's certainly correct in defending them because he just knows the guy's not going to bluff him on flops. And so he's, he's, he can realize the value in his hand. Roman Koronev, the Russian online qualifier, was the first player out. We've also lost Julian Thomas, the German sit-and-go specialist. He went out in seventh. 
And Roman Harold to... shoves for three and a half big blinds. <laughs> Are you even looking? Uh, if it's folded to you in the big blind? Oh, no. Oh, I thought you might, if, you, if you're looking, is there any hand you could fold? You could certainly fold some hands uh, with three and a half blinds here. Reshove by Helbig. Wow, this is like the first hand he played in a long time, right? Yeah, he hasn't been involved too much. Button folds. Small blind folds. And the big stack in the big blind folds. Wow. Ace Jack, he found the three and a half blinds. Pretty big hand. It's like when he had six big blinds and woke up with kings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Hell big reshove with threes. So we're racing again. You know, I actually don't know if I like that shove with threes. With threes, yeah. I was because the, the big blind thing. is calling with any two. So he might he might actually want to move up the pay ladder, whereas with threes, you're guaranteed a coin flip, essentially. So I don't know if I like it, because now if, if he loses, they switch places and, and stacks. Roman is and the difference is what? Uh, 90,000 euros? Or is that, am I right? Is that right? With pocket trees. Three clubs, About? three of space. The difference between eighth and... And oh, seventh six, 60, place is about sixty thousand. The right? sixth and fifth we're talking here. Sixth, sixth and fifth is uh, fifty thousand, just yeah, about block. fifty. I think I would have folded threes in this spot because he, if he loses here, well, he loses he loses future fold equity, and he becomes the diamonds. absolute short stack. <laughs> a big change. Block of threes is still ahead. And a turco. There is a Ooh. four of hearts. We like it sweaty <laughs> on EPC <laughs> Live. <laughs> An ace, a jack, wow. hearts. That is a double up. Uh, four, four, six. A lot of ways not to lose. We already had Just one chop, too. And the river cut. Red six. <laughs> wow. Three diamonds. spotter. So threes <laughs> hold, six and six we lose plays, Roman Herald in sixth place. Germany. Taking home 155,000 euro. Can we please have a big round of applause? 155k for Roman. And we're down to five. Alexander Helbig still in the danger zone, though. 2.75. 14 big blinds. Lassa Frost with 12 big blinds. Those are the two shortest stacks. By the way, I should point out that Lee Jones, head of poker communications at PokerStars, is now online. Lee, unable to be in Berlin, so we can't have Lee's lowdown with him in person. But Lee is happy to answer questions today about the Red Spade Open, which is happening on Sunday, the Monaco Cup, a big tournament which will precede the Grand Final in Monaco, and also the cash games the EPT is going to be running during the Grand Final. In fact, Lee will answer all manner of poker-related queries. So if you tag your question, EPT Live, on Twitter, Lee will see it. And if you're lucky, you'll get a response from at Lee H. Jones. I like that the blinds are back at 100, 200. Because I can <laughs> easy do, the, to I can do easy the math. The math, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> math is hard. Yeah, I, I, it kind of reminds me of the, you know, like the some of the full toll tournaments. They have these weird blinds sometimes, like three four thirty five three, seventy, like one seventy three forty <laughs> or something. And you're like, oh my god, how many big blinds does he have? I just <laughs> cannot figure it out for the life of me. It did make me feel better when I some of the big name pros I talked to, they're like, yeah, I don't know, I just kind of guess at it. I just kind of ballpark <laughs> it. <laughs> He's got between sixty and seventy. Might big make blinds. sense to invest in a nice little calculator right next to you, a little abacus <laughs> or something. Yeah. Voss makes it 400,000 from the button. Haig in the big blind. Haig moves all in. And this is painful for Voss. Now you've got two guys shorter than you. Yeah, this is a painful spot for him. But sure. he did get a huge chop when he was supposed to go out in seventh place, I believe. Jack 10 versus King Jack. Indeed. 
So he's on a super free roll right now. It's a nice free roll to be on. A couple of <laughs> questions of money. for Eugene Kachilov. Nicholas says, Eugene, are you planning to play the scoop? Uh, I certainly am. Uh, I will probably miss the first couple of days of it, but uh, you know, after that, I will be playing every single day. Can't wait, actually. And Check out Lee's tweet down right there. Look at that. Like it. The top half of Lee Jones's head. <laughs> I love the fact that we've got half of Lee's head in there. <laughs> we've got the good half, though. Beautiful eyes. Gutis has a question for you on the emails, Eugene. Having just read your recent blog about getting fit, can you talk a little bit more about how getting healthy, getting fit has helped you at the poker table? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's helped me, uh, you know, as I always say, it's, it helps me not only physically but mentally as well. And uh, I feel like, specifically for the last year and a half, I feel like it's helped me a lot. Uh, you know, in dealing with, uh, with I guess, like a downswing that I'm going through, which I think I would have had a much tougher time dealing with had I not been working out and keeping healthy. Um, just because, I, you know, I remember like three, four, or five years ago, you know, uh, when I would bust out of a tournament or, you know, if I was like really upset, the answer for me was food, was always food. So I would always go and buy like a nice big steak or like eat a nice ice cream or chocolate or something and you know and now I don't do that and, and now instead I might be in a bad mood but like I go work out and I leave and I'm in a great mood again and I feel like my confidence is up again and I, I just feel amazing and I just I, I feel positive and I want to go back and figure out why I busted out maybe I did something wrong you know see, see if I can learn from any, from any of my, my mistakes um, and improve myself and, and I feel like I wouldn't be in this in the position to uh, uh, you know in the position for this improvement uh, had I not been doing, you know, had I not been working out. And also just in general, working out helps me play my, my best game at the table when I do play, um, you know. So I think I think those are some yeah, big you, reasons. Yeah, one thing you touched on there was confidence and something that, uh, you know, the, I, I went through like a huge workout period for, it's been two years now where I lost about 30 pounds. And you just feel better walking around like existing in your own skin. And I can imagine that when you're having a downswing, that it's really easy to like be really down on your confidence. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, even even you know, some people look at me and they think like, look, I, you've had so much success. Like, how could you feel down on yourself? And look, I, I I'm you know, I do feel if I go through a period or if I you know, I'm having like a bad run or something, I do start doubting myself. I do start thinking like, you know, maybe I was just lucky. You know, all these things, all these thoughts that start creeping into my head. So so uh, you know. Definitely things, any way I can improve that, any way I can get some confidence, definitely helps. Well, Hager's tried his limping strategy again, this time from the button. Doesn't get raised. Frost checks his option in the big blind. 10-6-3 with two clubs. Frost checks. Haig bets. So Eugene, if you just, you know, had eight six in your hand and caught a six here. In and I'm the big blind? Yeah. You know, it's a question of dynamic again. It depends on how often this guy's limping the button, how often he's open limping. The first I mean, time limping the button. He did limp from uh Right, I, think I remember early from the cutoff before. or something. Yeah. I mean obviously there's you know, it's also depends on the opponent. There are some opponents who are probably not very good players who are limping for the button for a completely different reason than than this guy because I know he's a probably a tough player a very tricky and creative player so his limp on the button doesn't necessarily mean what it might mean for a uh, for an amateur player so so you know I I, might, I may consider many options I'm, I mean I'm certainly not folding um, I don't know what I would do exactly whether I would call or check raise or bet um, it would really depend on the dynamic of the table, but I, I would definitely not fold. So Frost, check calls the flop, he checks the turn, and Haig bets again, 530,000. You know, last time he limped, uh, it, 
He probably didn't have much of anything because he got shoved on, I think, and just folded. Right, right. Uh, and in this case, I don't know, it feels like maybe he could be limping for a different reason entirely, like maybe wanting to get shoved on by the big blind. The yeah, absolutely. He could, have, he, could have a, he could have a big hand in that he's limping with. Um, you know, he could also have a hand like, I mean, he could also have like a strong hand, but not like an absolute monster that might have just hit the flop like ace-10 or mm -hmm. king-10 suited that he may, maybe didn't want to raise and get shoved on, but felt comfortable in limping um, or like jack-10 suited. Uh, he just felt comfortable that these guys wouldn't shove light on him, so he, he felt that there's a high chance that he'd see a flop, and having position and a big chip stack, he would he would just win in a lot of flops, and clearly this is a very favorable, favorable flop for him. But even if he has a hand like 8-9 suited, you know, I, I like the fact that he bet the flop, and even betting the turn again is a, is a, good, is a good play, because like you asked me, what would I do here with 8-6? So if, that was certainly something that I might give him, so like, what would he do with 8-6 if I'm betting again? So 8-9 is a good bet. I think Frost may have shoved the river there. I think it no, went check-check check check and he just oh, mucked. Check, check, check. He check-check, he just mucked. I don't uh, know if I recommend just mucking there. No, <laughs> I, I think it's fine because he doesn't give away what he was limping with. I, I, I think he realizes that what he did was very unstandard, mm -hmm. um, the limp. So he doesn't want to give his opponents any information. He, he realizes that he has no equity in... in uh, uh, in showdown, he probably understands that this guy in the big blind probably had a 10 or a 6 that's probably going to win. Uh, so it's not that important for him to see his hand, uh, but it's more important for him to disguise what kinds of hands he was limping with on the button or was bluffing with or decided or decides to give up with on the river, which is smart as well, in my opinion, um, because the big blind's hand was, you know, not very hidden. It was just most likely some, some one pair type hand that was just did not believe him. Uh, so it's it's absolutely fine. It's not that crucial for him to find out what he was being called with. I just want to make sure that I don't muck a winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying if he had a hand like 8-9, you know, which is very pot, like 8-9 suited or something. Pretty sure. Uh, there's Pretty no way 9 high is going to win there. Just a quick reminder. So we've got Lee Jones online at the moment, at Lee H. Jones on Twitter. And Lee is happy to answer all PokerStars related queries. He's specifically talking about the Red Spade Open, the Monaco Cup, and the cash games of the Grand Final. But if you've got a question about anything to do with PokerStars, just tag it EPT Live. Lee will pick up your question and hopefully answer it. And we'll give you a... Reminder of the password for today's free roll after this hand. Haig, not going to repeat what he just did on the last hand. He's going to raise this time. 400,000. That's Pascal Voss in the big blind. You know, nowadays people don't really ever limp the button, but I, I do remember doing it myself, and three or four years ago it was kind of... It was kind of like a good thing to do every once in a while. So I, I do think versus some opponents, it's not, it's, not, it's not a bad play in some positions. Like even, even here, it's probably a pretty decent play, actually. Well, I'm actually I'm pretty um, interested to just see players mixing up their play right now. So, yeah, I mean, I can't really. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, and even a lot of these, uh, oh, okay. for a lot of these players, like a limp on the button, They've, they've probably never even seen that because you know a lot of players now who played for the last only like two or three years they just don't see that because they always know like you're just supposed to raise or fold on the button so they don't really know how to react so with with that in mind you can really take advantage of some of some players and do that um, so which is what which is why I, I kind of like un, you know uh, plays that are not so standard so everyone pretty shallow frost and Helbig, the shallowest of the five players remaining in this tournament. And Ryan says, Eugene, with a stack of around 10 big blinds, considering ICM, what is the smallest pair you are open shoving at this final table? Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm probably not the best person to ask, uh, like, ICM questions, because uh, I haven't studied it, studied it enough. They just mean probably you, more you than you I should. You personally, like... But me personally, like, what I'm saying is, me personally, I might not have the best answer for it. Uh, but when it's five-handed, and I have 10 blinds, with anties in play, I mean, I'm... I'm shoving any almost pair? any pair, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even deuces and threes. Yeah, I, I mean, on, it really, no you know. Pair, no pairs lower than deuces, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely no pairs lower than the deuces. That's, no, that's not in my, play, in my <laughs> game play. <laughs> but uh, the only way I wouldn't is if I have, like, 
four internet players on my table who are aware of you know of my ranges and you know they're happily willing to call me with a hand like ace five or, or king ten, five. ten or like just any big card in their hand you know uh, so then I may not but a lot of live players are you know they're a little, bit, a little bit more cautious they may not understand the true ranges and you know what you should be calling with so it really depends on my table if I have a, like I saw so I guess if I had a table of this four, four table. internet players I may not be shoving deuces, threes, and fours. Um, if I had a table like this, I would definitely be shoving every pair. So it was an under-the-gun raise from Robert Haig. Helbig shoved for 2.3 million. And Pidoon asked for a count of Helbig's stack. Decision is on him in the big blind. Yeah, you don't want anyone to get a read. <laughs> I never understand that. When people take off their glasses, they think for a minute, and then they put them on. <laughs> you don't want anyone to get a read when they're already all in. <laughs> <laughs> I read an interesting theory, actually, a couple, like a week, last week or something, that, that some professor did a study on tells, and he, said, and he said that they actually recorded like the World Series of Poker final table, and they found that most people give away tells not with their eyes, but with their hands and the way they bet. That, that some people have like a confident way of betting and not, so that you get, actually get a lot more information that way. He Pidun called. has called the all-in. And Alexander Helbig is at risk. Oh, wow. Fives or eights. He was thinking for a while, Alexander eights, huh? Alexander is our only player for 2.3 million, and he shows pocket fives. Five of clubs, five of hearts. Called by Daniel with pocket eights. That's a good call. Helbig in horrible shape. Spades. Once again, Alexander is our only player with pocket fives, called by Daniel with pocket eights. Helbig's in such bad shape, he needs to hire Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln would get him out of this. <laughs> Strong armor's way out of this one. And we're going to see a flop. Too many Give me that five! Too many carbs in those fives. Floppies, men of arts, three of diamonds, four of spades. Well, some hope for Helbig right. on this flop. The worst Daniel's flop. pocket oh, eights are still ahead. I guess it's do six or seven, or ace, or a five. <laughs> ace, deuce, five, card. six, seven. Well, a lot of a lot of cards. There nope. is a queen of clubs. Only a, a five Helbig. rescues Alexander Helbig. Fives in the deck to survive in the tournament. And the river card. Three Ooh, a six it's a six hearts. on the river. And can we so Alexander Helbig, the German online qualifier, from goes out in fifth. Our fifth player finisher in the main event of EPT Berlin, taking on 202,000 euros. 202 grand, not bad for someone who's satellited in on PokerStars. Not bad at all, I'd say. And we're down to the final four. And Daniel Guy Padun has extended his chip lead. He's got close to 12 million in chips. Haig second on the leaderboard with 7.66 million. Then Pascal Voss with 4.3. And Lassa Frost, the short stack, with 3.4. 17 big blinds. Next elimination makes 255,000 euros. We're getting into the serious money. That's enough for two and a half high roller events. <laughs> That's a scary thing to say. We are so getting much in, money. into the real money now, though. This is a, this is what everybody's playing for. These top four spots, obviously, all the money up top. It is a nice feeling to be up there now and still have a shot at more and be guaranteed this already. I mentioned that one of the questions Lee Jones, or one of the topics rather, that Lee Jones was discussing on Twitter were the cash games at the EPT Grand Final. Sven asked a very pertinent question. He asked. Is the rake in the cash games 3%? Leah's responded, yes. EPT, Monte Carlo, cash poker, capped at 3%. No, no way. Hashtag price of poker going down. <laughs> Good hashtag. You rarely hear about the price of poker going down. It's always going up. Not in Monte Carlo, though. One of the lowest rakes in Europe. Plus those EPT dealers, so you know they're going to be good games. Eugene, do you know a Kathleen Sherman? I don't. I don't think I do. Just what? checking. This isn't like someone you've paid to send in a couple. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Not only is Eugene a highly respected player in the poker community, he is so nice. Whether as a guest commentator or for the respect he shows other players at the table. <laughs> well, thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> True that. This hand raised by Pidu and called by Haig. Meanwhile, I'm hearing that they're down to four players in the high roller. A reminder, if you want to follow that final table, use the live updates on the PokerStars blog. This is blind on blind. Padoon's continued. And that looks like a raise. And the dynamic here, Eugene, is you'd expect these guys not to get involved in any major clashes and not start playing big pot poker. Or at least that's been the, the pattern well, this thus is a, far. This is turning into a major clash because that was a raise to 875,000 called by Padoon. Pretty quickly as well. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, like I said, from what I've heard before, Pedun is not the type of guy who likes to fold hands. So I would expect Haig to probably have a, a, a good hand here. Um, was, the, was the pot raised preflop? Yeah, Pedun raised small mm. to big. Okay. Oh, Pedun raised small to big, and yeah. then he went check call. Pedun right? led the flop for 300,000, got raised to 875, oh, and I then see, called. I see, I see, okay. Yeah, I... I almost never expect Haig to, to have like nothing on this flop. I almost always expect him to have a hand that has equity and probably a pretty good hand. Well, home and check raise on the flop. Pidun now checks the turn. <laughs> you don't think sometimes Haig just takes a stab at a check at, uh, at raising the flop, thinking that Pidun's just continuing for like no good reason? Well, specifically that flop is so is so wet, especially after for a hand that's opening. You know, you almost always have if you have a big card in your hand, you essentially have a draw or a pair. Uh, or like a flush draw, so or even middle cards usually have a straight draw. So, so it's kind of hard to get people to fold. Um, what was it? King, King Jack, Jack Queen, Queen eight. eight. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. It's a you he, know he semi bluff was, raise. He was open ended actually with Queen Eight. He had you know he had uh, double gutted, double yep. double gutted. Um, so I think that's a f that's a fine play uh, instead of instead of calling and and potentially having to call another another raise. Uh, he decided to, to raise and just get two free cards. Well, for the first time at the final table, the chip leader now has a better than two to one advantage over his nearest opponent. 13.3 million for Padoon, 6.4 million for Haig. And now, Eugene, you mentioned sort of one side of that is that you raise and you get two free cards, but he also kind of gave up at the same time. Do you think it's worth firing another barrel there? I mean, I'm playing results. I see that the guys That's called him with just a jack. But that's very player, player, uh, it depends on the on your opponent. Like, as I said before, if Pidun, if Pidun is the type of guy who doesn't, doesn't like to fall. fold, then you, then yeah, then he, d he played it really well, in my opinion. He, you know, he took his free cards, he realized his equity, he didn't, he didn't get there, and he gave up. It's fine. Um, you know, he definitely couldn't bet the river. I, I think there was a very, very small chance that Pidun would fold the river once the turn went check, check. So the only question is whether he should have bet the turn. Um, and, you know, it's, it's tough to say. I, I, I personally like his check and just, you know, kind of playing a smallish pot. You know, you raise the flop. You see if Pidun even has a hand that he wants to continue with. You know, if he calls, then you know he hit the flop. He has something. And then you just, you know, you try to make a hand. And if you don't, then you don't. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. Morton on Twitter asked Lee Jones a question about the red spade open. He says, what tactics would you recommend in the tournament? And how often would you seek a 20 big blind coin flip? And Lee responded, you should ask Eugene Kachalov, not me, about the red spade open tactics and 20 big blind flips. Come on, Lee. Have a little more confidence. By the way, when Eugene was with us yesterday, because Eugene's going to be in Italy, it's probably been quite tough for him to play the Red Spade Open. But yeah, a reminder that J. Dot Hartigan and Joe Stapleton are both going to be in the field, and there are $100 bounties on our heads in that tournament too much, on Sunday night. Too much bounty on me. By the way, you guys could also ask Lee about his working out because he's lost a lot of weight too. Yeah, he has. In, in the Bahamas, he was, you know, I ran into, he was running a lot, and you know, he's doing a lot of working out, and you know, he's he's getting it in really good shape. Spelt. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of boring. Remember when poker was like everyone was like chain smoking and like eating cheeseburgers <laughs> yeah. at the table. Yeah, I was recently watching like a like a 1997 I think final table of the World Series with like Stewie Unger and you know people were, like sitting there smoking like deciding what to do in the hand. Was that the one where they thought it'd be an awesome idea to play the final <laughs> table outside? Outdoors? Yeah, when it's like windy outside, the car <laughs> yeah everything's flying. Yeah, I can't imagine what they did there. 
but I, you know, I think that's the case with every sport. You know, every every sport. You know, when you look at the beginning of it, you know, you try different things until you until you figure out the right way to, the right the right way to do it. This is Padoon and Haig again. Padoon, the original Razor, is now continuation, but the flop called by Haig on the button. Yeah, I think th I think at this point he doesn't mind playing a, a few more pots. You know, Haig is not doesn't mind playing a few more pots with Padoon because now it's four left. There aren't many that many uh, pay jumps left. No one's really that short, so he's fine with playing big pots versus an opponent, which he he probably feels he has an advantage uh, against. When you're going for the win now. Right. Exactly. Now you're just going for the win. You know, you you've gotten through. Uh, the 7th, the 6th, and 5th place. Looks like a bet of a million. Yeah, it is. Half pot. The Doom barreling, and pretty quick as well. As soon as that turn card was dealt, he went for those chips. Two flush draws out there. Plenty of straight draws. Yeah, that's a very action-y flop. Uh, especially after it goes raise call, um, the caller's hand is very, you know, very, very often hits this flop. I mean, if you have a combo draw here, you're just getting it in. Just so often you have a hand like queen jack, king queen, jack ten, right. nine ten. I mean, like ace ten, like all these hands, flush draws, straight draws. There's just so many hands. Here it comes. Oh, he's just gonna call. Um, I guess at this point he might have a hand like. King Queen or King Ten, um, maybe. I'd be Jack, really Jack, surprised maybe if he had Jack, worse. Oh, Jack Ten for sure. Jack Ten as well is yeah. definitely in his range because he's open-ended. Board pairs on the river. The King of Diamonds. And Padu wow. now checks. I checks behind. He's, he's queen. queen. Ace oh, he's King. king. Whoa. Wow, that is a bad check. Is he trying to check raise? No, because because Haig would only. I mean, the, bet like no, that's it. just bad because Haig would only uh, maybe value bet with like queen jack, and he probably wouldn't call a check raise. And probably. Would, uh, you don't mean he'd only wait, value bet queen jack? He'd also right. value bet all the hands that, that are beating three. Kings. Yeah, he's probably not bluffing, so he most likely had a hand. He almost for sure Haig had a, had like a pair and a, and a draw in that spot. So when the king comes on the river, it's actually the most beautiful card. You know the draw didn't it, get there. Not only that, but it makes it less likely that you have a king. So that's why that's why it's so perfect when you hit trip kings on the river. It makes it less likely in Haig's view that you had a king to start right, with. Right, the same reason Haig couldn't bluff so, when the ace hit the river on the last hand. Right, so he can bet and expect to get called by worse so often because, you know, uh, Haig will now feel much more comfortable with, with like, middle pair. So... Which is why that was not a very good bet. I mean, that was not a very good check at all. <coughs> it, the only way it's a good check is if you th if you expect the guy to just value bet really thin, or or if it's like a bad player and they're gonna make like they're gonna make two bad calls with just a naked draw on the flop and on the turn, and then we'll bluff the river, which is a lot to assume, um, and most good players will not do that. Uh, so for all those reasons, he, he definitely should have bet in the river. Well, Padoon now has 15 and a half million. He now has a better than three to one chip lead over the rest of the table. Wow. Padoon really applying the pressure now. Yeah. I got a tweet here that I want to make sure that the uh, the Poker Stars fat cat is listening to. Also, there we go. Got their attention down there. This is from Teddy Bear Bonfire. Three weeks ago, I didn't even know the rules of poker. Now I'm addicted. No small part thanks to the commentary of you guys. Oh, he's tagged us both. Thank you, Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear Bonfire. Can we uh, make sure that one gets sent upstairs? Yeah. Up to the blimp? Yeah. Just make sure that it gets forwarded and circulated. Maybe pinned on the notice board in the Isle of Man. <laughs> By the way, I have been shirking one of my responsibilities, just to remind you of the free roll password. Only 5,000 players registered at the moment. Remember, the 30,000 seats up for grabs. Monaco, nice and simple. The location of the EPT Grand Final. Monaco, all lowercase. That'll get you into today's free roll with its $1,500 prize pool. You know, James, remember yesterday how I was talking about by the time they get to heads up a three-handed, they might even start talking about a deal? Not likely if one guy's got $20 million. <laughs> 
Good point well made. Oh, wow, he just pushed all in for 20 blinds. And Padoon folds. I mean, Padoon is in like in one of the best spots you can be in in poker at the final table. You know, he has an overwhelming chip lead and his three opponents have the same chip stacks. So it's just so easy to run the table over. Quick shout out to one of our regular viewers, Inga Christofferson, who's trying to help people on Twitter by actually replying to them and giving them the password. Please remember it's all lowercase. No capital M on Monaco. Small M, small O, small N, small A, small C, small O. Okay, I got a question for Eugene. Here we go. Would you rather be trade places right now with the annual Gabe Padoon? So same spot, all the chips, all you know, whatever, and you get to be you. Okay. Or you can eat all the carbs you want for the next year. It's <laughs> a good question. Right? Oh God, it's actually not as easy as you think. No, I, I would definitely take. Uh, You'd take the, the poker the, spot. The, the, the poker spot. Really? Yeah. Nope. Maybe if maybe if uh, maybe if you ask that question of me at the end of 2011, <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> and, you're, now you're and I was in the same shape as I am now, maybe. But you know, I, it's funny that you asked that question because I actually remember discuss you know asking Elke a hypothetical question or or even Lincoln like, wh how much money would we pay? Like not how much, but like how much of my salary would I pay to have like a perfect body? Like what percentage of your net worth would you give up in order to eat whatever you want with no consequences? I say 50. I would go 50%. Yeah, I, you know, so like I think I would go probably about the same. Like it's, you know, food, I love food like a lot. So I think I would give up a lot. In, uh, but some, you know, like like Lincoln was like, you're crazy. He's like, I would uh, maybe do 10. Because he's a psycho. <laughs> well, in response, well, let's just have a quick look at the final table of the High Roller Tournament. Look at Philippe, he's just always there. Looks like they're three-handed now. <laughs> That's a big pot being pushed Lim's direction. Oh, four-handed. Someone wrote in oh, a while yeah. ago in support of Lim. Oh, Max is really short, right? Tom wrote in to say, I know that you have wonderful gents, that you wonderful gents are not covering the high rollers table, but if I could just wish Aaron Lim a mighty good luck, I would greatly appreciate it, guys. Keep up the good work during these trying times at the slowest final table ever. We've got an all in. Frost shoving on Voss. Wins it. Uh, by the way, in response to Teddy Bear Bonfire's tweet, Lee Jones says, <laughs> A few months ago, Stapes didn't know the rules of poker either. Now look at him. <laughs> That's now hooked good. thanks to Jay Hardin. Correct. plaman has got a question about uh, what we deem to be not so great check on the end with three kings there. What if he bets his trip kings and faces a big non-all-in raise? You know, specifically the way that hand played out, it I would almost never expect it to face a raise all-in raise because considering how dry the board was on the flop and on the turn, if Haig had anything like two pair or a set or a straight, I do not think he, he would have protected just, it a little harder. He would have protected it a little bit harder, at least if if not on the flop, then at least on the turn. So I didn't, exp I you know, I would almost never expect to be beaten when I have ace king there, uh, and that river comes. I would, I would be like 99% sure of my hand. So if I get raised, I mean, uh, you know, right I, when I the don't board know, bricks I, out, you improve like huge on the river, and the yeah. board bricks out for all uh, draws. Like it's really yeah, hard to wrap yeah, a big I th hand I there. I think in that position, I would have to call. I, I, I don't think I can fold. Uh, it, it would take a lot for me to fold there. And you can't look at it just from the perspective of what if I get get raised. You have to look at it. What if I get raised is one thing you do have to look at, but also like how likely is my opponent to bluff? Exactly. Yeah, all those things are very very important. You you exactly. add them all together to figure out what your move is supposed to be. Yeah. You know, against Haig specifically, I mean, I would be really confused if he raised me there. It just wouldn't make sense because he's a good player, so I just it just wouldn't make sense to me. But at the same time, it wouldn't make sense that he's bluffing against me in that spot. So I'd be really confused, but. At the same time, I don't think the stacks were so deep. Because I, I think on the river, I think the pot was like 3 million or so at least. Uh, or 4 million, I, I think. Even. It was 4 million. So, and, and he only had like 4 million more. So my bet would be like somewhere between 2 and 3 million. So there, was, there wasn't there was even really a raise. Just on odds, right. You would there, have to. You would have he to could call. only raise me 1 more million. I would never fold getting like 9 to 1 at that point. 
Even he might even he might even decide to shovel the hand like king queen. Then he just decides like, you know what? It's too strong. I think I just have the best hand. And what you do know, we, we what do we trips. think of uh, Tinoon's strategy now of just kind of like shoving? Um, into these I, guys. I think it's fine. I think the the way the blinds are and the stacks. Uh, he's facing 16, 15 blind stacks and the twenty one and the twenty one blind stack. I think it's perfect. Yeah. Because I think great min, spot min, to be in. I mean, I think min raising is okay as well. Eighty one bigs uh, to twenty one to seventeen to seventeen. What an incredible spot to be in in a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked a lot about this guy in the last couple of days because of his amazing record in this tournament. Has only played an EPT main event three times. Each time it's been EPT Berlin. In 2011, he bubbled the final table. He came ninth. Last year, he came 17th for 20,000 euros. <laughs> and this year, he's at the final table in a commanding position. Potentially, he's going to win this thing. And it's really this amazing. always gets a big field, Eugene. This is a huge tournament and quite a tough field. Yeah, that's really an, that's really amazing. I don't really know what to say. That's just, just an amazing accomplishment. You know, you see things like this in poker sometimes where people just go on absolute heaters and, you know, it's just it's hard to explain. I, I, I don't know. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, I think a lot of it has to do with confidence. I think people undervalue having, com you know, just being confident. Like, if you just if you come you just in here always, like, this is my tournament. Is I always my, do good yeah. in this tournament. I'm going to do better this year. Even if you're not, like, the best player, like, having that kind of confidence really, really helps. You know, you you know, you, even you kind of exude that confidence, your opponents kind of notice it and kind of just stay away from you. You know, even even though you may not be the best player, so it really it really does help. If Padun busts one more of these guys too, the other two are drawn really thin. I think that if somehow they can cannibalize each other and consolidate their chip stacks. <laughs> <laughs> to one other guy. It's like, come on, man, take one for the team. Just, right. just give me your chips. Just, I gotta have a chance against this guy. <laughs> just give them to me. So can't let this guy win. High graze is small to big. Four hundred sixty thousand. Frost will defend. Wow. Uh, yeah, I guess. And we haven't talked a lot about Lassa Frost. There's so much support for him, by the way, on Twitter. Obviously, all the Scandies are watching, railing their guy. He's playing, been playing poker for seven years, but mainly recreationally. And what he decided to do last summer is take a year off from his job and just play poker full-time for a year. And he says, no matter how well he does, he claims, even if we were to win this tournament and walk away with nearly a million euros, he still plans to go back to his job after the summer. Wow. I like it. Do we know what his job is? He works in economics. I love it that in some... Maybe how he just really likes his job. In you know, in in the northern Europe parts of the world, you can take a year off from work and yeah. just go back and have yeah, your job exactly. back. I in America, that. like one week later, you would be you'd be no, <laughs> probably two days later, you'd be replaced. Yeah, that's true. Don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out. Hig checks after raising before the flop. Lassa Frost hasn't played a ton of hands, so I don't know if he's really going to be defending with hands that hit this board that often. Yeah, but even hands like 10 jack are monsters on this board. Uh, you know, jack 10, queen 10, and all the middle cards. I think that's a good point. I think people undervalue gut shots sometimes. Especially when the guys... Uh, I think he min-raised into him, so in position... Uh, I think you definitely should be defending a lot of those hands. Although I think specifically in this situation, he probably it's probably better to shove uh, when you have like 14, 15 blinds, take the equity, but not necessarily. Wow. Calls the 275,000. Jack of clubs on the turn. Well, there we go. Queen Jack and Jack 10 just got a little better. Yeah, I, I don't think Haig ever has Jack 10. Um, Frost may. Because I think Haig would definitely, if he had Jack 10, he would, if he went, if he checked the flop, he would play for a check raise.
But he, he could have a hand like Jack Queen. Or, 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 uh, let's see. What else? Maybe a hand like Jack Seven. Well, having check called the flop, Ike now leads the turn. Interesting. Seven hundred thousand. Eugene, if you pick up equity here, or just just make a monster of the turn. You're gonna decide to lead. Um, just in case your opponent decides to check behind. There are many reasons to lead the lead this turn. Uh, you know, you put you put your opponent in a tough position if he has like a pair of eights, or a pair of like a hand like five six or five seven or eight six. You you put him in a really tough spot. Um, so I I like it in that sense. So. I think it's fine if you had like a hand like Queen Jack to do that with and not give the guy a free card. Um, Frost folds. And he's going to be left pretty short now. Even though we didn't lose a player out there, we are losing a player in here, unfortunately. Yeah, we have to say goodbye to Eugene Kachilov. Wish you the best of luck in San Remo, Eugene. And Thanks, look forward guys. to seeing you in Monaco. Yeah, as am I. Have fun here. So we lose one member of Team PokerStars Pro. In just a moment, we'll be welcoming in another. I also want to send a big shout-out for Lee Jones, who is online right now hosting a live Twitter chat about all things PokerStars. Questions about the Red Spade Open, which is taking place tomorrow night. There are bounties on me and Joe, for example, in that tournament worth $100 apiece. He'll also talk about the Monaco Cup, a tournament leading up to the Grand Final. Uh, by the way, Monaco, that's the word you need to get in today's free roll. The password is Monaco. Plus, Lee, happy to answer questions about those cash games. Anything else going on right now on PokerStars, just tag your question, EPT Live, Lee will see it, and maybe you will get a response from at Lee H. Jones. Under the gun race from chip leader Daniel Gay Padoon. Hold it around to Pascal Voss in the big blind, and he also folds. So we're keeping the guest commentators coming here on EPT Live. Eugene has gone, but we welcome Liv Barry to the booth. And Liv, congratulations on your deep run in this tournament. Thank you, James. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. Little little sad at the end, but you know, as is as is life. Was it mostly sadness or anger? Oh, just sadness. Just no, there sadness. was no anger. No, I, I was just incredibly happy with the way I played the entire tournament. Um, you know, uh, got lucky a couple of times and got unlucky a couple of times and, you know, just couldn't really... Uh, uh, day three was fun. I went from nothing to a huge stack to sort of medium, small stack by the end. Had a couple of... Uh, I think that's the coolers. day we were, we were watching you the entire day. Oh, yeah, that's right. Of course. Yeah, I was on the, I was on the feature table with Boris. So, yeah, it was, yeah, it was just a really fun day. I, I loved the table and was playing lots of hands, which is always fun. Yeah, and you and Boris seem to be having fun. Yeah. Because we're playing... Uh, we the hand game. Yeah. Count the finger, the, the guess the number of uh, fingers game. It's like a, it's like an advanced rock, paper, scissors kind of. And what do you do? you just hold uh, fingers up behind your hand? Or no, like? no, 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 no. Explain the game to us, please. It's really hard to explain. Basically, you both put you both, both hands up, and there are f five possibilities. You know, 0, 5, 10, 15, or 20. Um, and then you take it in turns. Hold on, 0, 5, 10, 15, or 20? By, by your four fists, basically. You each use both hands. hands? Yeah, both hands. Okay. And it can be in units of five or zero, each hand. There's no, like, three fingers or anything. Got it, okay. So either open or close your hand at the end yep. of when it's time to shoot or whatever. Yep, and then you take it in, uh, in turns to guess what you think the total numbers of, like, open hands will be. So when you see the other person speak, you then react immediately. So there, there's no time. You'd, you'd think that you'd be able to like react. You'd be able to hear them start to say zero. So therefore, like close both your hands, but you can't. And it's very obvious if someone's cheating. Like it's really hard to explain without a demonstration. I'm, Agreed. I was talking about with my friend <laughs> making a YouTube video explaining the game. It's such a cool game. It's all about it. and then you learn your opponent's tendencies. I don't like speed leveling. games. I'm always it's not, very it's bad not really at those. A speed, I mean, it's kind of it's a, a reflexy game. game, though, isn't it? It's not really, no. Okay. No, no, no. It's not a reflex game. That's what I'm saying. You can't. Your reflexes aren't fast enough to react according to what they say. So it say. is like it's rock, paper, you, scissors, where like you can't react to about, seeing someone else put out scissors. Exactly, exactly. But it's about, uh, it's just like a sort of guessing, what, it's predicting what you think the other person's going to do. 
Badoon raising small to big. And Haig defends. Oh, so let's see who's still in. Well, there's one guy with all the chips, Liv, and that's Daniel Guy Padoon. He's got nearly 17 million. Bloody hell. Wow. Uh, Robert Haig is the second biggest stack with 5 million, and then we've got two shorties, Lasse Frost from Denmark and Pascal Voss from the uh -huh. Netherlands. And what are the blinds at? 1, 100, 200? Yeah, it's wow. pretty shallow stack poker at the moment. Padoon's just loving his life. How much fun is he having? And this is the guy who has played this tournament three times. Uh -huh. In 2011, he finished ninth. Last year he came 17th, and this year it looks like he's going to win the thing. Wow, what a hero. And this is his route to the final table. So he ended day one, which is 19,800. Day three with four. Wow. That's a, so he had a huge stack at the end of day two, and then sort of actually a sort of small to average stack on day three. And then I lost I lost track after that. I don't know what 1.1 <laughs> means after that. Well, you could just look. He was ninth out of 17. Oh, there you go. Look, so oh, you see, there's the answers. Look at that. Kind of did the Who work knew? for you. Yeah, thank you. Wow, that was, that's very, very impressive stats. Do we, what other information do we have on him? Uh, we know that he runs a business with his brother. So he's a recreational player. He's by okay. no means a pro. Yep. He takes a week off from their business every year to come and play this tournament in Berlin because he lives near Dortmund. Wow. And his business is selling uh, cell phone parts. So for you, as someone who loses and breaks your phones on the regs, yep. you may want to buddy <laughs> up to this guy. Yeah, he sounds like uh, an everything man. <laughs> he can get you a new uh, belt holster. I know that you like to sport your phone on the belt. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> I have never done that in my life. By the way, Liv, you said you were very happy with how you were playing. I get the impression that you feel at the moment that you're going through one of those periods where things are just clicking because you've had quite a lot of deep runs recently. Um, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I cashed uh, London as well. Um, I mean, semi-clicking. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing well. Uh, I don't think... I mean, there's always room definitely to play a lot, lot better. You had a pretty good sweat, what, in Italy recently? Where was it? Uh, yeah, I ran, ran deep in Venice, WPC Venice. Yeah. I bubbled, though. Um, and then... Yeah, EPT London, I went deep. And there was a UK um, IPT event as well. Wasn't yeah, there? UK Cork? IPT Cork. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's had like a lot of almosts, which is... Uh, so don't play yourself down. You're no, having no, results. No, thank you. Thank you very much. No, it's, it's, it's a good feeling. And then we've obviously got EPT Monte Carlo around the corner, which is the most important tournament of the year, <laughs> in my opinion. That's... I'm very excited. It's going to be so much fun. Padoon raises and takes it there. I got a good news, bad news situation, everybody, on the Twitter. Good news... Someone's tweeted a picture of the poker star's red spade on their boob. Oh, wow, Bad news, it it's a dude. Oh. You can see a little bit of nipple, though. Is, would that be under good news or bad news? I don't, oh, I don't really know. Good news, I mean, good news for right. you. It's never bad You're to see nipple. You are kind of a weird dude, Bree. Thank you. She's one of those weirdos that likes chest hair. <laughs> <laughs> that makes your day. Let's see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, get up, get up in there, Bree. Don't rub the mic so against it, though. You'll blow out everyone's speakers. There's so much chest hair. What's your chest hair situation, Hartigan? Um, it's pretty wispy. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Sparse, but yeah. long. I'm not, I'm not as hairy as my American colleague, that's for sure. Is that sort of looks like Scottish chest hair, I feel S like. Uh, what, Scottish? Yeah, it's like... Hmm, interesting. You could comb it. It's dead straight. Liv went to the zoo this week here in Berlin, saw uh, less hairy animals than me. That's also true. Um, do you want to know the best site at the zoo? Please. They had, I mean, it's an incredible zoo. They had everything, everything you could possibly imagine. But the funniest thing, right in between, like the elephants and the giraffes and like, you know, all these big five animals, was a pen full of different types of chickens. And they were the weirdest chickens you've ever seen. It's just like, it was bizarre. It was like uh, they had... Well, actually, there was a pigeon in there that looked like an Elvis pigeon. It had like all these weird feathers on its feet. <laughs> I've got a video, I'll show you. Um, there was that thing, and then there was like Velociraptor chickens, and then there were um, chickens that looked like they should have been in Mad Max. So just it some was, really mean-looking birds? It was like, ex they looked like some kind of science experiment, all of them. It was like chickens, if you were... I dated someone that had like an irrational fear of birds, and we went to a wedding on a peacock farm where the peacocks just roam free, and she shrieked in the middle of the ceremony <laughs> because one of them got too close to her. Brilliant. Birds are kind of scary. No, they're not. They're amazing. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, Liv, quite a lot of people 
Paul and Matthew among them tweeting to say the game you were describing is a drinking game called Fives. And according to Matthew, it can get pretty deadly. Hashtag speaking from experience. Yeah, it sounds a similar type of thing. I mean, that Fives, I think, is more like multiplayer, whereas the one I'm talking about is specifically heads up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a similar. You can play three-handed is really fun when everyone puts in one hand. So again, it's zero to 15. You've got to guess. But then you've got to think about what two people are doing. So that's even more. As well as yourself. That's the best is when... Right, you have to factor in what you're going to do. Right, but uh, it, that shouldn't be too much of a challenge, but you'd be surprised. I've seen people do some very special things. <laughs> it such sounds as like something I'm going to be really terrible at. Liam Ireland says, Scottish chest hair is legendary. I can give photographic evidence. Please don't. Yeah, restrain <laughs> yourself. Please do. Encouraged. Hashtag EBT Live. Send in your chest hair pictures. So, who's the guy in the blue hoodie? I'm sorry, I haven't. Uh, that's okay. Been the more guy in the blue hoodie is Pascal Voss. Oh, that's he's, Pascal. Okay. He's from the Netherlands. Uh, he was the guy everyone was waiting to go broke today. Did not go broke. Somehow made it at least to fourth place. Doubled up a few times. Had a r crucial chop pot mm -hmm. where he got it in King Jack. Excuse me, Jack ten versus King Jack. And the board uh, paired sevens and their jacks, and there was an ace on board. So it was a chop. Chop pot. And uh, now he is wow, all, he's in. all in. So, and Padun has reshoved to freeze out the rest of the table. It's like ace seven or ace eight. Ace yeah. seven against ace queen. So we could be three-handed. Raised all in for approximately two. Seventy percent chance we're going to be three-handed. Luca's going to call it at the final table. Called by Daniel with ace queen. Ace of Arts, Queen of Spades. Once again, Pascal is our only player with a seven. Called by Daniel with a queen. Cool. And we're going to see a flop. Flop is five of diamonds. Deuce of clubs, five of spades. I guess if you have a seven, you don't hate the paired board. No, absolutely. 6% chance of a split right now. Oh, no, 19%. That is and a Turco. Updating statistics. That is a king of clubs. Now Pascal needs a seven to double up. A deuce or a king to split the pot. And the river card. River is a six. Six is not eight. enough. So we are down to three. Pascal Voss from the Netherlands out in fourth. Like a Voss, he's going to walk with 200. Luca's got it. Come on, Luca. <laughs> and obviously, a lot of Dutch poker fans were hoping that the Netherlands could go back to back. Ruben Visser won London. They wanted Pascal Voss to win here in Berlin. Not to be. So we've got two German guys sandwiching Lasse Frost. He's still the shortest stack, but to be honest with you, Robert Haig is pretty short as well. And Daniel Guy Padun has 75% near enough of the chips in play. Three handed, nice, three quarters yeah. of the chips. Not bad. 101 big blinds, which is the deepest that anyone's been stacked for days. I'm not sure that's true. It's been really shallow. Really? Yes. I mean, not days, that's an exaggeration, but yesterday, I, coming into the final table today, the chip leader had 46 big blinds. Bloody hell. That is <laughs> and that's the surprising, because the I mean, average, it's such an incredible structure. Well, it's not the structure that's to blame. The thing that Liv's really obviously been out seeing Berlin and not following. Was, by the way, which you're perfectly, I'm not criticizing you at all for. No, if, if I had a life, I would yes. not have been sitting watching a five-hour final table bubble, which is what they did. They played nine-handed oh, really? for yeah. about four oh, levels. Oh, I heard this, and it also took six hours to go from night, yeah. Is it right nine to eight? Yes, of course. Exactly. Makes sense. And yeah. and ultimately what there was a lot of tanking going on as well. Oh. Hands were taking like ten or fifteen minutes to play so out. I mean these players are all exhausted. So it's just running time off the clock, and that's why they've got themselves into this situation, you know? It's all you can have a great structure, but if people just don't play poker, then the blinds are gonna catch right. up with them. Or or if yeah, short stacks just keep doubling. Ad infinitum, then yeah, it's gonna happen. We didn't honestly didn't even have that happening yesterday. I mean, that happened twice where a short stack got it in and doubled up. It was mostly just people taking a really long time with their decisions. That's frustrating. So I, I guess there was a lot of Stapleton jokes to fill the dead time. Well, just by the end of the day, it was just screaming. It was just saying, get me <laughs> out of here, please. Yeah. I think I said we were in hell. 
at one point. Well, there's an all in by Frost. Frost, yeah, on the button. Ten big blinds, and Padoon wants a count. God, what an awesome spot to be in a tournament. Just, oh, it's just beautiful. Stacks and stacks Dream. of chips in front of you. Everyone up against it. And this it's perfect because you can just apply so much pressure yeah. to these sort of medium stacks. They, you know, there's so much, there's so uh, much money, but you know, for every every payout jump. This is ten and a half big blinds. And I mean, Frost has got to be shoving so many hands on the button here. He just has to. Those blinds coming around so fast. Fold by Padoon. And folded as well by Haig. So the all-in gets through. A reminder of the free roll password. Going to keep giving this out intermittently. Monaco will get you into today's game. Once again, you'll find the tournament in the EPT section of the PokerStars tournament lobby. Starts at 8.15 Central European time. That's 2.15 Eastern. We're looking now at Lassa Frost's route to the final table. Finished day one. A stack of 60,000, double his starting stack. It's kind of been flying under the radar for the most part. Liv, I don't know how much I'm supposed to talk about this, but I saw, I have a rough cut of the video. Oh, really? Yeah, From the stuff that building? we shot. Yeah, it's really decent. And uh, I'll, I'll show it to you if we have some time, maybe after uh, the final table's oh, over. I don't know when it's going to premiere or whatever, if I should even be talking about it. But Probably not. I'm but whatever. Out. That's what I do. <laughs> I get in trouble. I'm sure you get in trouble from time to time, oh, too. Oh, yes. All the time. By the way, once we are done here, and Liv's already referenced the fact the grand final is just around the corner, the EPT Live Roadshow does move on to Monaco with our live coverage kicking off on Monday, the 6th of May. Ten days of live streaming of the main event, the Super High Roller, some of the side action as well, possibly some cash game action as well. So make sure you... Look at the schedule. It's available to view at PokerStars.tv. Meanwhile, there's some um, short stack on short stack action here. Possible violence. Hey, Robert raising. Hay is raised. And there's no more laddering up, really. Ooh, a cheeky flat. In the, uh, if you're last across, you can't really wait around for Daniel Guy Padoon to bust Robert Hay and... Also, you know, you got to try to play for the win at this point. Yeah. Hey, gives up the betting lead, does not continue. Oh, I'm really interested to know what kind of hand Frost is flatting with here. Instead of shoving, I mean, on his, on his stack, that's a pretty, uh, <coughs> not controversial, but alternative play. You'd expect him to be shoving almost all of his. It's been happening hands. a lot. It's been happening a lot. A lot of people just flatting, flatting in the small blind. Sometimes even. I Has mean, he been trapping a lot? Would you say? Or no. He's oh, so you don't think he's like got a monster? That he's just he could, with? but I mean that has yet to happen. It's been almost as straightforward as you can possibly think. Like when people limp, they fold to raises. Um, when people, like, just it, it's been very exactly what you think. Like. On basic levels face of up, poker. Face-up, face-up yeah. poker. Well, that's surprising. Haig has continued one street late. Call that the de delayed continuation bit. That's right. I mean, Haig could definitely have, you know, a decent ace. Or, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, it's very possible for him to check an ace on the flop because... He knows how short stacked his opponent is. It's not like he's worried about getting all the money in the middle. He can easily get it in in two streets as opposed to three. Well, if you turned open ended, you got there. Flush draw also got there. Hard to put. It'd be really hard for uh, Hay to shovel in as a bluff here. Well, he has shoved. Frost has invested yeah, pretty I mean, close to half his chips in this hand. It's hard to imagine Frost. You know, it's hard to imagine Hay thinks he has any fold equity. So 
Frost has just got to figure out. He's obviously got some. He's got some part of the board. He's just trying to figure out if it's enough to call off his tournament life for. I mean, do you think he's the sort of player you've been seeing him? Do you think he would be flatting with with <coughs> six five that sort of thing? Pre or do you? We, think we've seen very that few showdowns from him. He's probably been the least active player at this table, I would say too. Because I mean, if he has any ace, he just can't fold. He just really can't fold. I I I do think that if he had an ace in his hand, he probably would have just shipped it before the right, flop. Right, exactly. So he's more likely got some kind of you know, and any like mid middle pair would have gone in pre-flop as well. So he's probably got some kind of like. I mean, he, he, I doubt he would ever have eight seven because he wouldn't have gotten to the river. He wouldn't call turn. So more likely some kind of. Wow, he folds it. Some, you know, king five, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's got to be something like that. Yeah. So we play on three-handed. Well, that's really dented him now. He's got seven big blinds. Seven big blinds, and, and Robert Haig, who is second in chips, has just under 30. I posed a question to Eugene Kachlov. I'm going to mm -hmm. see if I can find something. Okay, here we go, Liv. So right now, I'm going to give you a what if. What if you could trade spots with Daniel Gay Pidun right now, take over his chip stack, it's all legal and everything, yeah, obviously, hypothetically, or you can tour with Metallica for a year and be their uh, bassist. I wouldn't be that basis. What, what do you want to be, a I guitar want to be, player? I don't want to be the guitar player, but I'd also want these magical lead guitar skills to make me That's good. That's fine, yeah, yeah. So but I you get would be, those You'd as well. be as good as their current. <sighs> I would be the first two-time EPT winner. Oh, that's oh, true. That is true. So much, that's I don't know if a great I don't question. Know. Well, Eugene picked Eugene picked poker, but I said for Eugene. Well, what, yeah, what was his? That he could, I doubt eat, Metallica he, was he could eat all the carbs he wanted for an entire year. Oh, that's enough. not even close. Of course he'd pick the UPT. That's. He didn't say it wasn't even close. He did say he would pick the table, but he said if I had asked him at the end of 2011 when he was just getting used to not eating carbs, he might have picked the food. Really? Hmm. I mean, that is that is a really... That's a really tough question. Yes. Well done. Got her. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, here we go. I wanted to get this tweet in for this fella. Do this guy a solid here. Where's the guy who asked you to say hi? This is from Adam. Liv, can you say hello to Matt McGetrick because I like to embarrass him and he loves you. Where is it? That's the name. Hello, Mac. Matt McGetrick. There you go, hi, Mac. Hi, Matt. Mac and Matt both. You have a difficult name to say. Matt McGet Rick. <laughs> it is not easy. Matt McGet Rick. Who's Rick? We got to get him now. Get Rick. Whoever he is, we got to get him. We have an all in. Oh. The Dune Min Rays from the small blind. Hike shoved from the big blind. Padoon says sick move. Frost, meanwhile, is just doing backflips going, cool, 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 cool. I managed to get that. would be the sickest uh, heads up stack. 25 mi 26 million to 1.1. Frost wants him to call, but also win. <laughs> he doesn't really want Haig doubling up. That's true. Ed Dawson says, with that chip advantage, should Pidoon have this locked up in the next 30 minutes? I think that's a little it's ambitious. It's a little optimistic, yeah. yeah. But it shouldn't take too long. I'm actually having to check what the next blind level is because we don't usually see it on the EPT. Uh, 122.40 with a 30k ante. That's what they're going to be playing in 22 minutes time. So in 22 minutes, <coughs> the big blind will be Very eight big. times the starting stack. Yes. Love that. Dune raising the button. <laughs> Thank you, Christian, for your photograph. <laughs> Liv's getting a good chuckle out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is one of the jokes I made on the final table bubble last night. This final table is a prison on planet bullcrap. <laughs> oh, you're 
pulling out all the naughty words, aren't you? Yeah, I know. Who says bull crap? People who want to keep their jobs. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Watching the dealer from above, his hands look like two octopi doing a tango. And that's where we're at. Yeah. Talking about the dealer's hands, which I'm not criticizing because I'm going to be there soon, too. Tadvidas asks, will EPT Monaco have cameras with hole cards? Yes, it will. Not for every day, though, but just for the final tables. The final table, the main event, and the high roller, super high roller. The super high roller. We'll and have, the high roller? Or? Uh, we won't be doing the high roller. Super high roller and the main event will have hole cards and coverage from every single day, but only hole cards at the final tables. I hope you realize that you were beaten to the punch by Lee H. Jones, who'd already responded to that gentleman on Twitter. Way to go, Lee. He's still online and answering your questions. Tagged EPT Live. Specifically, anything you want to know about the grand final, about the cash games there, about the Monaco Cup, and crucially, about the Red Spade Open being played online on Sunday night. I love having Liv in the booth, but she insists on reading all the tweets herself, which I like to keep them a secret from the guests. Yeah, we see, we try and protect you, Liv, from the stupid ones. I like the stupid ones, though. Okay. You want a stupid one? How about that one? <laughs> oh, Can that I must, say it out loud? It must be really stupid. Can I say it out loud? Yeah. Liv, go to the kitchen. <laughs> Think of a new one. Nothing so funnier than predictable. some Saturday afternoon misogyny on oh. EPT Live. You don't want me to go to the kitchen. No, she's a terrible I'm, cook. Exactly, I'm atrocious. So let's pick up the action here. Hyde did his limping thing. Frost called from the small blind and Padoon checked. So we've somehow gone three-way <laughs> to the flop. Hyde, <laughs> this is the third time we've seen him limp. And every time he hasn't really turned up with much. <laughs> This time he continues, and he's going to get a fold from everyone. Oh, this is some cutting-edge aggressive poker. <laughs> I'm blown away. Graphical Nick chimes in. Thank you, Nick. The ante is currently the same as the starting stack. Pretty sick. Tiago says, hi, folks. It's always funnier to watch with you broadcasting. Thank you, Tiago. Seb writes in to ask. Maybe you can handle this one, Liv. Loved your comments the last few days. Enjoyed all hours so far. Can you tell me with how many big blinds should I sit at a cash game table? It depends. Are you one of the? I, I'm. I'm one of the people. <laughs> I want to sit down with the maximum. If I'm. If it, I'm. It depends. If, if you feel like it's, you know, good enough cash game to be playing in, and you feel like you have a big edge, then in theory, yes, you should be sitting down with the maximum to ensure you've got the weaker players covered. Um. It depends on a number of things. Yeah, it depends on what players, how much, you know, the weak players are sitting with and the, the strong players are sitting with and what your bankroll is and many different factors. So, how long is a piece of string, Joe? Seven. Huh. Lassa Frost I was going to answer orange. <laughs> Sorry, Lassa Frost has four big blinds, right? Yes, well calculated. That yeah. is correct. I'm just, sort of just wondering how we managed to go to the flop without it all going in. <laughs> he's, he's an ICM. Well, here we go. Okay, so Haig puts him in. He calls. We're racing. Queen four against nine ten. So kind of a race. So Haig ahead with queen high. Frost with two live cards and hoping to hit one of them or some kind of funky straight. And even if we don't lose Frost here, we are losing Lee Jones from the Twitter. Lee Jones, we salute you. Thank you very much. Bye, Lee. See you in Monaco. Bye, Lee. Queen high in front for right now. But as you can see, it is pretty much a race. Queen four. Queen of spades, four of diamonds. So again, our lead players, last day with nine, ten. And we're going to see a flop. So here we go. Frost tournament life on the line, and he hits a nine. Spiky spike. And that puts him way out in front. Now, if he were to hit two pair on the turn, things would get interesting. Hey, mostly looking for a queen right now. No help, so only a queen now. Otherwise, Frost is going to double up. Rubicon. 
He does double up, but it's still super short. Right there, doubles up to eight big blinds. And Daniel Gabe Padun just giving it away, slipping from 101 <laughs> big blinds to 97. I mean, almost every situation is great for him because if it's still two players and it gives him more sort of room to apply pressure because they're both, you know, they both want to come bust out third. I mean, look at those pay jumps. I'm sure having the two three, of them, two, five to five, three, one. both having three million in chips and not wanting to go broke is probably the it's best situation for possible for him. I mean, he should just be he should just be raising every single hand. Rick Dacey, staff writer on the PokerStars blog, tweets to say, Haig following in Steve O'Dwyer's footsteps and bringing back the final table button limp. It's working, goddammit, <laughs> it's working. I know, Steve thought it was bound and determined to get that to work <laughs> for him, and he could not. Is that another limp? <laughs> oh, that's a raise. We've got an all in. Haig made it 400,000 from the button. And look at this. Padoon has got something he likes in the big blind. What could possibly stress him out this much at this point? It's an eight big blind shove. And you've got gazillions of chips. Is it like King 10? Pocket deuces. By the way, quick update from the high roller. Maxim Likov from Team Pro out in fourth. So they're three-handed in the high roller. How much has Griffin got? If you want chip stack updates, you're going to have to go to the PokerStars <laughs> blog, I'm afraid. You won't let me. You won't give me your computer. So, Pidoon folded, I believe. It's Higgs' original raise he's come over the top of. Oh, no, Padoon's still thinking. Yeah, I mean, if you do, if you're sat there with something like King-10, you got to feel like you're above his range, but at the same time, you've still got Frost uh, to, wor no, sorry, Hague, yeah. to worry about. You don't want to end up calling and then giving Frost a and then folding to a reshove, giving Frost... Frost a chance for a triple up. Well, Pidoon does call. Looks like he re-raises. Oh, now Hayes in a tough spot because he's getting such an absurd price. Oh, he did re-raise? I don't know what. He just dropped in a stack, so I'm not sure what he intended to do. No, Pidoon's he just called. Called. Just a call. And it looks like Hayes going to call yeah. as well. Wow. wow. So just to clarify, Frost is all in. There could potentially be action on the side here. This could be the whole tournament, in theory. It really could. Because there's so much in the middle, it's going to be very hard, you know, if... Uh, if James, have you hey seen a double, a double elimination for a win before? No. Not in an EPT This main. could be sick. A king 8-5 flop. Come on, king queen versus king jack. Badoon checks. Hague has 3.8 million behind. There's already 4.8 in the middle. I'm actually excited. You are. You're standing up. I've seen you this uh, on the edge of your seat in a while. Okay, that's a small bet. 400,000. Tenth of the pot. Padoon calls. <laughs> so we've got 800 uh, in the side pot now. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Padoon could have some kind of small pair, I suppose. You know, some small pocket pair. I feel like it, sevens or larger, he would have just yeah. re, you know, re-raised. I liked him for, th for threes before the flop when he just made that face, what to do. I, and I, it's really hard to put hay on any kind of decent value hand like king king i mean i guess he could bet 10th pot with king queen or king jack but 
He has bet Seems really small a few times when he did have decent it's hands. Just... That's true. So 800,000 in the side pot. Three of clubs on the turn. Here comes a million. 1,050,000. Conventional bet size. And that's another call. It's just really hard to put Pidoon on like nines or tens. I mean, unless he was trying to get Hay to, to re jam I gotta, the top. What's Frost thinking right now? Does he have a shot <laughs> at this? <laughs> I think he's just. He looks surprisingly calm. He's got a slight smile, I think. Jack of clubs. Well, backdoor clubs just got there, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think that's really much of a factor, though. Could be for Frost. Well, maybe. I think if you're Padoon also, you, you may be sometimes. You're definitely calling when you pick oh, up well, backdoor clubs. Oh, he's going to Now he's, yeah. he's going to bet. Set him in, please set him in. That's two million. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. So like what what do you do if you're if you're sat here with you know king king queen you've got you've got to think your your way about this is way, total way ahead of him but like total amaze balls. Yeah. <laughs> At least he's smiling. He's in a horrible situation. I mean I feel smiling. like he does, he just has king he has king queen. He folds he fold it? Wow. He folds a massive side pot. Well, whatever happens, Padoon has won that side pot. And cards have to go on their back. It's an all-in and a call. We need to see the cards. 9-10 was the hand for Frost. 8-7 oh, of clubs. Wow. He did back his way into the nut flush. So we lose Lassa Frost in third place. And we are going heads up here in Berlin. And Daniel Guy Padoon has 24 million chips. And Robert Haig has less than 3 million. So a huge chip advantage ahead of heads up play. We're going to say goodbye to Liv Bury from Team PokerStars Pro. Thank you for joining us, Liv. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing Liv in Monaco. And we're going to conclude this thing after a brief break as we reset for heads up play. Brilliant. Join us for the heads up battle here at EPT Berlin. Sick.